Hello everyone, Rich Nance here with your Defensive Tactics Technique of the Week. Today we're going to talk about the Tooler Drill, often referred to as the 21 foot rule. For those of you unfamiliar with the research of Dennis Tooler, he did some studies in the 80s, I think the early 80s, where he was measuring reaction time and he determined that the average healthy person can close a distance of 21 feet in approximately 1.5 seconds, which is also pretty close with the time that a fairly proficient shooter can draw and fire two center mass hits. The problem, Frank, is we don't want to tie. Right, if you're firing those two center mass hits while he's sticking a knife in your chest, you've lost. That, that's an unacceptable option. Because honestly, what are you going to do? Shoot him some more while he stands there cutting you some more, stabbing you and some more. And let's face it, shooting him, uh, unless you get a nice uh, central nervous system stoppage, right. uh, he's going to continue to move forward. A right. handgun is not going to knock him backwards. Like and I want to talk. I want to talk to you about how long, because this is mm -hmm. what really matters. So we talked about 21 feet and the 1.5 seconds. This really is important when we think about it. And I'm drawing this line very short for a reason. So we're going to label this two ways. We're going to label it 21 feet, and we're going to label it with the 1.5 seconds. Okay. Now. Question for you. If somebody can run 21 feet in 1.5 seconds, how long is it going to take them to run? And my, I'm not the best artist in the world, but we're going to call this double the distance 42 feet. How long is it going to take them to run 42 feet if they can run 21 feet in 1.5 seconds? I thought you weren't going to put me on the spot with math problems. A little, little bit of easy math, man. Maybe three seconds. Maybe three seconds is what all of us say. It's instinctive, it's natural, it makes sense. Double, double, right? Here's the problem, this 1.5 seconds, that's from a standing stop. And, he, and then we get to the 21 mark, 21 foot mark where they make impact, they're, mm -hmm. they're doing us damage. This 42 feet from that same standing stop takes just over, wow, my, I'm gonna have to change my artistry here, takes just over two seconds. Why? Because he never slows down, he never stops, he continues to accelerate, his inertia and his momentum helps, now he's even hitting you harder and faster, but at 42 feet. What's that mean? That means that 21 foot gap, that extra distance is only a half a second of time. We know how much can happen in a half a second. And if you've ever really wondered, get one of your SWAT guys to take you out on the range with a semi-automatic 12 gauge and see what kind of damage he can do in a half a second. Thankfully, we're not talking about that, but let's talk about time and something called exsanguination. Do you know what exsanguination is? It's another big word. And I learned it from a special forces, special forces surgeon, thankfully, and I'm not gonna try to spell it, but it's bleeding to death. That's all it is, exsanguination. How long does it take you to bleed to death? If we shoot the average healthy human in the middle of the chest with a 12 gauge shotgun and blow their heart out of their chest, stopping all circulation, there's enough blood, or there's enough oxygen in their muscles and in their brain to function for how much longer? Six yeah. to 14 seconds, depending on which coroner you talk to. Six to 14 seconds. Now, let's take the lower number. Let's say they have enough time, they have enough to function for another six seconds. That six seconds is four times this 1.5 seconds. So let's do four times the distance. We'll call that, that's, that's easy enough, 84 feet away. 84 feet, because we all qualify on a, a range that has yards, not mm -hmm. feet, right? Is 28 yards. How far do you qualify with your handgun? 25. Me too, 25. So that's even farther than our maximum trained engagement distance. But that also means that if they had the knife in their hand at the 25 yard line and they screamed, I'm gonna kill you, and they started running at you, and you shot them in the chest and got good center mass hits and they started to bleed to death, even at the minimum time frames, they can still reach you and put a knife in you. I have a problem with saying then we can't engage lethal force until they're within 21 feet. That's a bad idea. Now it's gonna get ugly. How about the 14 second mark? You do 14 is, uh, let's see, four, eight, we're gonna say 10 times farther. So now we're at 210 feet, 70 yards, two thirds of a football field that they could run chasing you if you were running and be able to still do you potentially lethal harm. So what's all this, this nice math and the, and the drawing, what's that mean? What it means is in our court system today, we have a lot of jurors, a lot of counsels, a lot of lawyers, a lot of judges who believe that we should not be engaging a subject with lethal force, firearm, unless if they have an edged weapon or an impact weapon, unless they're within 21 feet. 
What we need to do is educate them and show them that if I shot the guy at 28 feet, he had the knife in his hand and he was running at me, all I was trying to do was stop him six feet away from me with the knife so that when he fell, he wasn't able to stab me on the way down. That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to prevent the potentially lethal injury. The 21 foot rule, the tool developed so much time, you put so much time into and developed, it has to be interpreted properly. You know, and on the flip side of that, just because someone was 21 feet from you and they have a knife, doesn't mean you have to shoot him. I mean, no. there could be obstacles between you and him where he can't get to you. And Absolutely. you can have your gun drawn, give verbal commands. Another, another thing, maybe you're behind cover where he, he has nothing to even throw a knife at. So, I mean, all these things, you know, there are agencies, and you've heard ridiculous stories, as, as I have, of people who were afraid to even view a certain, uh, certain VHS video back in the day because it showed the, ooh, the 21 foot rule. And if an officer is eating you know, on his meal break and someone nearby, he's gonna draw down on him because they're eating. I mean, it all has to do with what you can articulate based on the suspect's intent. And I know you're smiling because and you well, and I think it's rational. funny. Well, but, I'm just but, thinking, you know, <laughs> we, we all, what's, what's that term we're both so familiar with? A, a reasonable adult. Mm -hmm. Well, we're reasonable adults, but we're also reasonable, reasonable adult law enforcement professionals. We know when we can interpret a threat and when we can't, and how we're supposed to be able to react. What I'm afraid of, honestly, for our brothers and sisters at Wear Badge is that, I mean, we're standing in a room recording this that is less than 20. They're, they're, if somebody was at the other wall, they'd be within 21 feet. And that somebody out there would think, until they get I this close, I He's can't. only 25 feet. Yeah. Not, not I don't have to but my agency, the law, the court decisions all prohibit it. So in the interest of trying to meet a rule that was never meant to say, you can't shoot them until they get inside of 21 feet, they don't engage them outside that 21 foot. And I think that's what Tula was trying to prove. And I haven't met the man, I haven't interviewed. But to me, it would only be common sense that he was trying to say, hey, look, you don't ever want him to get within 21 feet. Exactly. That's where you've already lost the fight. You're exactly right. I, I couldn't agree more with you on that. So 21 foot rule being what it is, that 1.5 seconds being what it is, understanding that doubling the 21 feet doesn't double the time, understanding that even with 14 seconds of oxygen left, that's 70 yards worth of fight left in them, the importance of obstacles like you talk about is highly important, keeping them so that they have, they have to work harder to get to you, and then being able to articulate the threat and your understanding based on normal human physiology. And marksmanship comes into play because let's face it, while someone could run this far and this fast, it's a little harder while they're being shot. And second, so don't underestimate the importance of, of shot placement. And also, you, like we talked about with Boyd Cycle, you moving. Right. So that rather than just run at a straight line like a train, if you move in an L, now he has to, again, reorient and chase you down. So all right. these things come into play. And anything that costs him time, costs him oxygen. Once we've delivered good hits, costs him oxygen, costs him functionality, saves our life. Great information. Thanks, Frank.